Hey everybody, it's Dee Dee again, here with Take 3. Uh, I'm here today with Sophie Thurling. Uh, we're going to talk about her role in The Faceless Man. Hi, Sophie. Hi, how are you going? Good, and uh, I'm talking to you, you're in Australia right now, right? I am. I'm in, uh, I'm in Melbourne, the lockdown city, as they call it. Nice. Nice. So what drew you to The Faceless Man? Do you know what? I actually didn't see anything about the film initially. I was recommended uh, by a fellow actor of mine, Pete Flattery, and he called me up one day and was like, so yeah, I'm, you know, I'm working on this horror film and there's a role here that I think you'd be really good at. And originally I actually auditioned for the role of Nina um, and not the lead. And while I was in there, um, James said, oh, you know, you've got the look for Emily. How about you just do a cold read um, and we'll see how you go. And next minute I was Emily. <laughs> and um, yeah, I got to finally read the, like, the full script and everything and it really drew me in and I was in, I was sucked in. That's cool. So you didn't really audition for Emily at first? No, no, I auditioned for Nina. Yeah, very, very different. <laughs> Completely different roles. <laughs> so, well, yes, your character doesn't do bath salts, so that's good. No, <laughs> no. You get, you, you get a different one. <laughs> but So once you read the script and you read it for Emily, and how did you prepare for that? It was a bit of a shock because Emily goes through a lot of different emotions in this film. Um, and I had a new challenge of playing a cancer patient. And it was something that, it was an element of the script that I really wanted to make sure I got right as well. So I guess when I first read the script, I was like, oh, I've taken on all this. <laughs> um, but, you know, it was, it was fun. It was worth it. It was a lot of fun. Um, hard work, a lot of research went into it, but it was a good challenge for me. So I was happy with it. So did you have to research um, anything about cancer to do that opening scene? Yeah, look, oh. James uh, DiMartino, so the producer and director, he has actually beaten cancer himself. So he was very specific about what he wanted. We had a lot of discussions over it. Um, a bit of research went into it, but he was, he was very sure about what he wanted for that character and, and, that, and that particular scene. So we did a lot of rehearsals on it. Um, I think we had like six weeks of pre-production and three, just three of those weeks was just working on that scene with um, Brendan Bacon, so. Oh, wow, that's, that's a lot of pre-production for that scene. Mm, mm. Three weekends, I should say, sorry, not three whole weeks, three weekends. <laughs> so, were there any challenges that you found on set? On set, I guess one of the biggest challenges, um, so a lot of the filming was done at a beach house um, in, up in Dramana here in Victoria. And it was about two weeks of bulk filming there. And not only were we filming there, but we were all staying at the location as well. Um, so that was a massive challenge, I think, for everyone because you couldn't really switch off per se. You know, you'd finish doing your filming and then you're all still there together and you couldn't really, you know, take a load off or get much privacy either. It was very, we're all kind of on top of each other all the time and it could make it a little bit stressful. We definitely turned into like a, an old family though. There was, it was, uh, it was a very family moment. So this is where you guys were all staying in at Orange Lodge. Yeah, correct. Correct. Yeah. So we're all bunking together at the house. It was, it was a lot of fun. I actually made all the cast and crew dinner one of the nights. I was like, all right, who wants spaghetti? <laughs> so you made spaghetti for the whole crew? Yeah, I made spaghetti for the whole cast and crew uh, one of the nights. I think another night I made tacos as well. Um, yeah, it was, it was, we just kind of turned into this big family. It was quite funny. <laughs> okay, so on that note, what did everybody else cook? <laughs> I wish, I wish they all cooked. 
<laughs> no, there was there was homemade pizzas one night. Um, I think there was like a just roast chicken and veg and other things, but <laughs> funny. So so tell everybody out here what it's like working with fake blood. Messy. <laughs> it's so messy. <laughs> so messy it's like and making sure you know you get the continuity right as well um i mean there were days where i'm standing outside i'm wearing a like a blue dress in this in this film for most of the film and i'm outside it's winter and i'm literally just standing with my arms out being like okay just hit me with it <laughs> and people are like splashing me with blood and making sure you get the pattern and everything right it's it's a, it's a messy situation. <laughs> and, and what is it like to get that off? Just as, just as terrible. There were a few, um, a few days where you just kind of you walk off the set and you just jump straight in the shower. You're like, okay, we're done. I'm just going to walk in there. I had several um, lots of my costume as well. So I could just walk in there in my costume. I'll just turn on the shower and just stand there. <laughs> Do you want anybody, what do you want people to take away from this film and regarding Emily? I think uh, regarding Emily, I, I think it's one important thing to take away from this film is that there are many different types of fear. Um, and, you know, that sometimes, sometimes things happen and you got to learn to trust your friends, to open up to your friends as well a little bit about what's going on with you. Um, and, you know, to stay, to stay strong and live your life as well. I mean, uh, for a lot of this film, um, you know, Emily is left with this fear of her cancer coming back. And it does, it consumes her so much that she's just not living her life to the fullest, I would say. Um, so I think that's a big part I would like people to take from it. Great. And when and where can people see The Faceless Man? Well, at the moment, it's, uh, I believe it's now officially on Amazon Prime over there in the US. Um, I know here in Australia, we've been delayed a couple of days. Um, and at the moment, you can get it on video on demand on, on Vimeo. <laughs> so are you, are you a big horror fan? Surprise. <laughs> Surprisingly not. Okay. <laughs> I um no, I I was always that that person where when you had sleepovers at your friends' places and they go, Yeah, let's watch a horror. And I'd just say, No, I would like to sleep tonight, please. <laughs> um, that was very much, yeah, that was my reaction to it. But I have watched a couple of horrors, but I think it's I also don't want to watch it in the cinema because I feel like I'd be that that person, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, my husband and I were talking about um, one of our favorite horror films and which has been turned into a series is Wolf Creek with John Jarrett. Mm. And, and we just were, we're, we're just drawn into this guy so much as this yeah. guy. And it's just, it's like now we're, we're hooked on Australian horror. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So what's next for you? Well, I mean, at the moment, you know, we're, we're dealing with COVID-19 uh, and we're in a pretty serious lockdown down here. So at the moment, nothing's really happening. <laughs> um, so I, I'm just kind of taking this time to, to chill out a little bit. I also put on a little bit of weight in the first lockdown. So I'm trying to get rid of that in the second lockdown. Um, but yeah, and, and then hopefully when things start opening back up again, it's, it's just full steam ahead and hopefully we have some more projects happening down here. I, I know a lot, of, um, a lot of projects I was helping out on, they all got put on hold and they have been on hold for oh, six months, seven months. It's, um, yeah, it's really hit us hard in the film industry over here. Right, right. I, it's the same over here. We nothing's mm. been shooting for at least six months now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Slowed everything down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully we can all get uh, 
back at it though. And hopefully um, we're, you know, look forward to seeing you in something coming up. Hey, he's hoping, he's hoping. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And so for everybody that's out there, the faceless man is out there on Amazon now. Um, you guys, you guys, you got to watch Sophie in this movie. Like she's great. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much. Thank you for uh, having me. How, you know, thank you for talking to me all the way from Australia. Yeah. That's really cool. Okay. <laughs> Neat. So yeah, thank you. And um, let's hope that uh, we can get some people to watch The Faceless Man. Yeah, and if you do, I really hope you guys enjoy it. Mm-hmm. <laughs>